welcome to the Starsology Astrology Podcast. I'm your host, Alison Price, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Arwen O'Neill. Hello, Alison. It's great to be here. So nice to have you once more. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the solar eclipse that's happening on April the 8th, 2024. Yeah, big one. Big one, yeah. Uh, frequently, we just look at eclipses in general, but we thought we'd just zone in on this one. Yeah. Um, because it's really becoming quite a hot topic. Yeah, especially um, in North America. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's, well, perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the second major uh, total eclipse in North America in the last 10 years. Mm. So the last one was, I think, 2016. Mm-hmm. And that was, that went across kind of the other direction diagonally. They're always diagonal, of course. And that one went from somewhere in Oregon Chrissy Crossy down to Texas, and this one is going from Mexico all the way up to West or Eastern Canada. Yes, and it's crisscrossing. They're both they both cross Texas, which is interesting. Lucky Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because in 2016 here in Vancouver, that was the one that we saw, and I was out there yeah. on the plaza. I was out there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll put we'll put a link. I, yeah. I, have, I have some more info on that oh, as well. Good. Yeah, it wasn't total here. It was like no. 90. Three percent total, which it was is good enough just to get a out. Little dim. Yeah, and a lot of people had like these neat little cardboard, you know, glasses and things that they made and eclipse kind of, glasses. Yeah, but not just eclipse glasses, but some of them had like this just little cardboard things that looked like they were made out of a cracker box, oh. and and you could see it reflected on the on the pinhole side. camera. Yeah, pinhole, exactly. Just very innovative and interesting and kind yes. of old timey and very DIY. It still works. And very right? interesting, yeah. It still works. It was just a neat little thing that everyone kind of like flopped out in the middle of the day. Yeah. In the middle of the work day. Just it like, was, hey, it, I remember it was great. A celestial was, event happening. It was huge. Everybody it was huge out here at the plaza and everyone out with their cameras and telescopes it's and a beautiful day. I got out there with my sandwiches early because I'm an astrologer, why wouldn't I? Yeah. But um Anyway, yeah, so that was the one that was crossing down yeah. from north to south. Yeah. This one's going south to east. Yep. And this doesn't happen often. No. And the fact that it's crossing the USA is why it's big news now. Yes, because, and it let's will be it. the last time it happens for quite some time in North America. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So basically a solar eclipse happens when the moon moves in front of the sun. Yes. So then, of course, they are conjoined. Yep. And they're actually parallel as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't get the eclipse. That's yeah. the whole point. And the interesting thing about that is that it just happens that they're the exact right size, that the moon is the exact perfect distance and the exact perfect diameter to actually cover the sun completely. That's right. For approximately four minutes, which is what this woman will be. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Awesome. The fact that we even know it's coming, we're all gearing up for it. Yeah. I don't think you were going to travel down, but uh, yeah. your plans fell through. They did. But there are, will there will be more eclipses elsewhere in the world in my lifetime. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, One day. It's, um, it's, a, it's not going over Toronto, I don't believe. It's, no. it's past it. Yeah. So. Somewhere in the back of the Anyway, so the, yeah. the eclipse path is the shadow of the moon hmm. crossing the face of the earth. Yeah. And that's a totality. But if you're near enough. You're going to see it half done or quarter yeah. done or so, a partial. Yeah, exactly. It's always an interesting thing is eclipses, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, we're, we're very interested to look into eclipses. I mean, so, solar it, eclipses, I think, are far more interesting than lunar eclipses. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, just the history of it, like the fact that we can see it coming, you know, hundreds of years in advance yeah. and, and back <clears throat> now, but back even 100 years ago, like they didn't know. It, it just happened. All of a sudden the skies would go dark in the middle of the day and, yeah. What? What's happening? That's right. So yeah. uh, this is this is a super interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. So I I have cast this eclipse chart. It is on the zero Aries um, setting here. Yeah. Um, so the eclipse is going to be happening at nineteen Aries. Yes. Which is the the actual degree of the zodiac where this solar eclipse is going to occur. So if you've got anything, yeah, at nineteen Aries or or, or Libra. Well, yes, or yeah. Libra. Um, it's definitely this eclipse is going to be built in. Yeah. Um, and if you, if your birthday is on the seventh, eighth, or ninth of yeah. April, this eclipse will be built into your solar return for the whole year. Yeah. So this influence will be uh, longer. Yes, definitely. So generally, eclipse. Well, this one's at the north node, but generally, eclipses um, last in months as long as it is in totality. And you mentioned just now it was four, what four four minutes? Four did minutes, you say? Yeah. Something like that. yeah. 
So that indicates that we are likely to see the effect of this for four months in time. Yeah. Yeah. Four minutes, 28. Yeah. Good old NASA. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, eclipses, solar eclipse will last from one solar eclipse to the next. So in general, you could say six months maximum. Yeah. But in this case, it's going to be four months for yeah. influence. So that's interesting to know. That's a yeah. good solid chunk of eclipse. For sure. And the uh, other. Oh, go ahead. No, so and it all unfolds uh, yeah. within that time period. Yeah. yeah. The other interesting thing about this one is that it is also conjunct Chiron. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And Eris and Mercury as well. Yeah. So it's it? it's quite. There's a bit of a. Yeah, I mean, Eris and Mercury are at 24 degrees, but all three—the Moon, the Sun, and Chiron—are at 19 degrees Aries right now. Yeah. Or they will be. It's bang on. It's absolutely bang on. So this imbues that energy into the eclipse, right? Yeah. 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 And so what are eclipses about in astrology? It's They are sensitive points in the zodiac that can then be triggered when transits after the eclipse pass by, Mm -hmm. whatever the next planet through the eclipse point is. Um, In this case, it's going to be Venus. But it's... It it triggers a sensitive point. Now, it depends. Solar eclipses that are about new beginnings. Yep. Because it's the beginning beginning of the synodic cycle between the sun and the moon, whereas lunar eclipses are about culminations. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then also you have to look at the node. Which node is it at? Mm -hmm. So this particular one is at the north node. So that's the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So the north node is bringing stuff. I like my analogies. I love them. The north (laughs) node brings stuff with the tide onto the beach. It's bringing you treasure troves and driftwood and and who knows what onto the beach whereas a south node eclipse will take baggage away from you interesting so it's this is a it's like i want to call it double whammy positive it's a solar eclipse at the north node so we can anticipate on eclipse day whatever happens and unfolds for you is likely to be a theme for the next four months Mm -hmm. so but it won't happen before there's no or before so yeah yeah. Hmm. with chiron there Yes, so Chiron has, we all know, it says the wounded wounded healer. healer. It's a time to learn something new. And Chiron is also an indicator of the gift in your chart once you've you've got over yourself. Yes, yeah. Once you, you know, you say, oh, I can't sing. Get over yourself. We all have our our skills. Or or, can't do my own taxes. Or I could never open my own business. I'm not good with money. Or or I could never. I can't cook. Yeah, or like Mm. even... Go, delving a little darker, I could never make it on my own. But yes. yet, maybe you need to leave that bad relationship Behind. eventually. Exactly, and it's out. a time for a new start. To yeah. be, I want to say on this day, if, if you're feeling that way at all, get some affirmations down yeah. for not only the new moon mm. wishings, get some eclipse affirmations down, yes. saying in this period, I I want this, I want, I need, I want, and I need, which is your sun and moon wants and needs, yeah. and these are the things I want to manifest into my life, and you could do that. Um, because Chiron is there, so we yeah. want to offer ourselves some self healing. Yeah, and what wounds do you want to use in your healing of yourself and others in the future? Yes. What what is it yes. that you are you can... killing yourself with alcohol or right. pizza or whatever it is? <laughs> right, and how will you be prepared then to help others and to help yourself with what you've learned and yes. gained through? Your through gift that healing that, journey. Yeah, uh, because a key word for Karen is the gift. So it, yeah. it, you have you. This is your gift that you can give back to others through experience and what you know and, yeah. and help people and so on. Yeah. So that's tightly conjunct Karen, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then of course it is. It is. Uh, it's part of the stellium there of Eris, which yeah. is always Eris we're, and Mercury. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna scrap and fight. Hear about some things. Women, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. girls, girls on top and whatnot, yeah. and all of those things would, are likely to be a potential there. Um, but the Mercury is there too, which is retrograde. So oh. reflection once more. So yeah. get out your gratitude journals. Yeah. Get out your diaries. Get out your. Who was that woman? Julia Cameron. Uh, I can't remember what her book's called, but it's uh, The Artist's Way. Oh yeah. Where you've got sixteen. Oh books. my God, the morning pa- uh, pages. Morning pages. Yeah. Get it out, get it down, and see where you can contribute. Yeah. Uh, you re- uh, Karen is there. Yeah. You want to do something about it. Now, of course, this is happening in Aries. Yeah. This is a sign that wants to do things. Yes. Right now. Yeah. So maybe you're going to be saying, I'm joining the gym right now, and you walk straight in and go and do it. Yeah. But you might be better pacing yourself because Chiron is there and Mercury to give it some thought about how you can make incremental improvements 
self-improvement yeah. over in the next four months. Yeah, because if you, if you make a rash decision and you go too far, then it's, <laughs> it might not last. It yes. might just be a burst of fiery healing energy and full of a load of talk we've heard it all of disruption and and then with that mercury retrograde and yes it just you're back on the couch and yes you're in pain and you're like why i'll never do that again exactly <laughs> yeah. so you know if you don't start if you're going to walk take the stairs don't do 20 flights on the first oh. day you never manage no, all your exercises like, or whatever you're doing a couple of flights that's it yeah build up slowly but if you are into um, I want to say self-improvement, which I think we are, and our we audience all be tends into to some be kind of self-improvement yeah. to to get better on and make small incremental improvements in what you're yeah. doing. Yes, um, daily habits. It really is about the, the little things and what you can yeah. do in your environment. We know there are global problems, but what can you fix in your yes. own home, basically, yes. absolutely, in your own life, yeah. in your own mental state? Because yeah. Mercury's there too. Totally. So it's a chance to get rid of old things and look at the treasures you have on your yes. beach as you walk down the beach you can visualize this you're going down the surface oh look there's a treasure chest yeah. and you're going to open it and what's in it is it full of gold doubloons or what a dead body i don't know but you know <laughs> you heard it here first exactly <laughs> the point being that what do you want what would be a treasure for you yeah yeah uh, you know yeah because because it is about the shore coming in as opposed to going out i mean there's always there's always the temptation of what can you get rid of? What can you, and there's always, that's part of the, the sort of self-improvement Recycle. journey. Cut the fast food out, try to all that stuff, which is never a bad idea. Please, please stop with the fast food. It's, <laughs> it's vitally important. Yes. Um, your health will thank you yes. immediately. And in the long term. trust us, we know. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, bringing in new important habits and little little habits because Aries is yes. that first sign in the zodiac it's about baby steps right yes. it's the fool in the it's tarot deck me. it's that first mm. step it's that first me 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 grabbing the rattle and shaking me. it and getting someone's attention and and the Aries disruption Aries even looks like a rattle <laughs> a baby <laughs> rattle <laughs> and yeah just you know speaking up but thinking before yes. you speak up yes writing yes. it down first Yes. Writing down a few, yeah. a few tries at least. You know. get, get gathering your thoughts. And I think because we know that the eclipse is coming and as astrologers, yeah. it's a good idea to be ready for this. We said yeah. the date was um, April the 8th. Yes. Yeah. So whether you're going to see it or not, you're going to have the potential of being able to use this energy. It's subtle. Yeah. It's an eclipse. It's a subtle energy because right. it's really just happening and moving on. But you, you do need to, um, as a good astrologer, make decide what, how are you going to approach this and what are you going to what are you going to write down? How do you want that day to go? Eclipse day. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It's and like can, moon, new moon wishing on steroids. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, if you if you want to, I don't know, you know, if you need to get your hair done before eclipse day, then get it done because you might be invited somewhere special and yeah. the whole thing could change. Or you might come across someone who's got a different ideas to you and you think, huh, I, someone recommended I read this book or something or watch a movie yeah. or see a movie. All video. of a sudden you have that interview that you wanted and oops, it's on video and now you need to look your best all of a sudden. Exactly. Yeah. Best foot forward. <laughs> it's, it's a sun moon thing. It's neat and want. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, if, again, if it's on your birthday, this is a powerful thing to have in any chart. And, of yeah. course, if you've got a baby born on this day, on Eclipse Day, that is a powerful thing in that chart. And it may yeah. dominate the whole thing. Yeah, being Aries, it probably yeah. would. Interesting mm. because that used to be, Back in the day, it was one of those. It was one of those things that uh, the 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 royal astrologer or the you know the yes. astrologer of the of the town for for the, the Henry the Eighth had an astrologer. Yes. Oh, for sure. All the popes, all the all the Caesars, all of the uh, yes. all the pharaohs, all the yeah. Well, anyway, Ronald Reagan, come on, Diana, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it was Henry Ford who said. Millionaires don't have astrologers, billionaires do. Yeah. <laughs> JP Morgan. Yeah. JP Morgan, yeah. there you go. Sorry yeah. about that. That's right. No, no. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I think also what's important is in which house in your chart, if it's not conjoining a planet, in which house is it occurring? Yeah. And we're going to have a look at that now. Yeah. Okay. So, we're just going to have a look at a couple of houses. 
that the um, this solar eclipse on April the 8th is going to fall in, and conveniently, yes. Arwen is here. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so tell us about the house for you. Yeah, so is going to be. it'll be in my sixth house. And is it uh, joining any planet? Chiron. Oh, good yeah, heavens. good old Chiron return, which we've already talked about in a previous episode. Yeah. Link so, the previous episode in the show notes. So this is huge. This is oh, totally goodness. highlighting this solar eclipse is occurring on your Chiron. It's actually tied um, to... On, on my Chiron return. On your Chiron return. Um, and it's going to be built into that. And I think well. my Chiron is at like 21 degrees. So it's it could not be... I mean, it could be like two degrees closer, but it's very close. No, it's my Chiron is at 20. My God. It's so close. It's, okay. It's like this. It's like this eclipse is just pointing at me. It's saying, Arwen, you're up. <laughs> I feel attacked. Showtime. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> so if I were coming to you as a consultant, uh, what's the word? As a as a client. Call, yes, there we go. Well, we, we'd be talking about your camera on return to would start I be, with. Would I be terrified? Would I be trembling? You would yeah, never be tra- terrified or trembling when you come to me. Because no? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a doom and gloom astrologer. No, that's true. <laughs> When I know that ahead of time, I would be like, what is going to happen to me? And what would you know, talk- Is she going to slaughter a chicken? Would- well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You know any anyway. chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, to straight up, this camera return by itself is a huge deal. Yeah. It's, it's bringing the focus back to, it's that marker. I don't want to say the age. but Fabulous. It's that. It, it rhymes that- with... Yes. <laughs> so it's this kind of return. Five. Oh, yes, the, yes, the big yes, one yes. Is, is coming up. Is it this year? Or? Oh no, it was last year. I bought oh, it. Okay. The big five oh. So anyway, proud of that it. one in the review yeah. tomorrow. But um, <laughs> so it's it's coming to simulate and it's sixth house work work daily daily activities yeah. the daily grind yeah. and we we have spoken about before the yeah. the general work situation can be in flux at times. Yeah. And um, and yeah. but the health is definitely on the mend. I think. Oh yeah, my health is so, stellar. So, since yeah. I knew you ten years ago, <laughs> oh you, you have transformed yourself into this fit person I, who is doing amazing things. Whereas you. you were a total couch potato back then. <laughs> um, no, you were. No, I was. Yeah, I, I played <laughs> video games. I. Uh, Made my own clothes and. Um, and now you're this fit, healthy, glowing woman, thank right? You. Which is great. Thank you. So well. you know. <laughs> You're moving into that po- that post Chiron period strong. Yeah, it's not like you're 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 going to. Oh, my body's aching oh, and the know, pains. I, I must do something. No, I'm definitely not uh, falling apart, which is awesome. I yes, <laughs> but it's definitely not like uh, just happened. It's it's for it's sure been an under. Yeah, no, it's exactly, and it's a it's one of those things where my God, if you were listening and you were <laughs> creeping up on your uh, Chiron return in a couple of years or so, or even 10 years, start now. Start now. You do not want to be like actually looking at your Chiron return and going, oh my God, all of a sudden I need to start getting uh, in yeah. shape or doing something about my diet. No, exactly. Now. Because it is six months for you. So this would yeah. also hook into the work situation. Yes. Um, and the fact that you've recently incorporated and you're, yeah. you've got, you're going down a different road that you ever have done. Yes. Being a contractor after, um, well, I was a contractor for a while, but I had a very, very steady contract for 12 years, which yes. ended a couple of years ago. So I've been in flux since yes. then, um, gainfully off and on. Yes. Employed, but so we can assume that yeah. then we've got this solar eclipse occurring on this sensitive Chiron in yeah. your sixth house. Of your daily uh, daily habits, daily work, health, yeah. work, the daily grind, and all the rest of it, and um, and of course you do have pets as well, so we were happy about that. So I would want to say that this would be a time for a fresh beginning mm. if you want to bring in different protocols to manage your um, your lifestyle, your your health, your diet, what you're spending your time doing. Mm. And, and stop doing things that are pointless and do more of what's really what you ought to be doing, I would want to say this is the time to start with this. Interesting. So if you decide that you're going to, because I know you've recently uh, launched your blog, and um, yeah, yeah and you're, you're putting your stuff out there. Published a book. <laughs> recently, pu- recently, as we yeah. speak, like published. Literally in the last couple of weeks. Yes, you've published your book, and you're actually getting – your opinion and your art and what your creativity is you're you're finally getting to a point where you're getting it out there mm. and at this uh, this eclipse day maybe a time where i would say do some journaling mm. write down what's cropping up and decide 
where are you going next with this? Because this is this is not this is just the beginning. Yeah. yeah. This is not the end of where you're going. Oh, you've yeah. got a lot of opinion on all sorts of things. I do. And um, <laughs> somehow you've got you're going to find your niche, I would yeah. want to say, and put it out there. Nice. But use Eclipse Day as this beginning spark because it's conjoining the North Node, because it's in Aries, because it's on your Chiron and conjoin Chiron. And because Mercury's there. And Eris. Yeah. And Eris, <laughs> which is, of course, the badass goddess. Badass of any, goddesses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gather your thoughts and, mm-hmm. and decide where you're going with how you're going to put all, how you're going to put all this together and where you're going to develop your goddesses further or go deeper or go, just go wider or whatever it is. Nice. Well, that's putting as positive spin on it as possible. <laughs> well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I believe that we have to look to the future. I am a... Yeah. I'm trying to find, um, when I work with clients, the creativity and the true meaning of what people are supposed to be doing. Yeah. And we can also, oh, I don't feel well. Oh, everything's aching and creaking. Oh, I'm yeah. sick of him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. My life's a mess. I'm yeah. going to eat weeds. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to a point. But really, what we're what, this is a chance because we know the eclipse is coming ahead of time. Yeah. This is a chance for you to get yourself a fresh new journal. Yeah. Get a nice sharp pencil. Mm-hmm. Be ready and start thinking. And it's when eclipse day comes and say, I, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that. And you may re- come back to this later because Mercury is retrograde and say, mm-hmm. yeah, I think this, maybe that, maybe the next thing. Or I need to spend more time with my family or go and visit my family in the States mm-hmm. or I need to whatever do some yeah. with your cats and whatnot and uh, yeah yeah pull it together where you're thinking this is a chance in the year to bring a focus for a new beginning on where what is your direction going to be yeah it's like a much more personalized new yes. year's day absolutely moment. and it's subtle it's an eclipse yeah. it's subtle and it can just pass you by and you yeah. didn't even notice yeah but because we're telling you all this ahead of time we can you always, can't ignore it now. Yeah. And it's only really going to be in effect for four months, but that would yeah. typically be long enough for you to establish something you're trying to do or what, mm-hmm. where you're trying to go or yeah. what, if you want to do some more art or do some more writing or which which genre you want to focus on rather than and become a more specialist rather than a generalist. Yeah. Even though you're pretty specialist already, mm-hmm. you might want to tighten your niche even further and say, this is really what I want. I want to do poetry mm-hmm. or whatever it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know slam poetry or right right or, 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 or you know yeah badass poetry they, yes <laughs> so what i'm saying is that this is the day when you are likely to get ideas about yeah. it and and this is nuances. not just me this is anyone but especially if you have we're talking about me because i have chiron like, it's in your sixth house your daily what, what are you will, doing this all will be what? conjunct my chiron return but a lot of people will also have chiron yes. at this point and a lot of people will have other planets at this point. So it is right. It is not just us rant, ranting about me, as sometimes we do. But this is also relevant to our other listeners. Exactly. And you have this somewhere as well. Ah, uh, yes. This eclipse is occurring for me in my 10th house. Yeah. So it's all... 10th house, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be shouting some <laughs> other stuff from the rooftops. I'm, I'm yeah, even thinking... Will. <laughs> I have so many micro projects on the go. I'm working on getting this course together. I thought I'd have it out by March. It, I'm going to. I'm looking at September at the moment. It is just so much work, but I, because I want it to be right, and I'm not just doing a, a regular old astrology course. I'm preparing a course for aspiring astrologists to get them over the hump, mm. because this is what most people come to me and say. I've been doing astrology for 10 years and I still can't read a chart. And this is what I'm trying to get over. Oh, wow, interesting. Rather than just doing, oh, this is, you know, the moon in Aries and the moon in the first house. I'm not doing that sort of course. Yeah, so it's a different approach. It's the opposite of that. It's like holistic. It's for people who already can read a chart yeah. but really want to polish. Yeah. And that's that's my strength. So I, not that I'm saying I'm going to have a course out by then, but that is just one string on my bow yeah. apart from this podcast and other my blog itself is having a some monster rehash this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm cutting out the dead wood and, and nonsense from 2015 that is just right so out of date. It's it's unbelievable. Well, so that's interesting. You said September. So that, is that from this eclipse? No, it's because I always want to launch a new product oh. at a cardinal ingress. Oh, there you go. Okay. So it's either going to be March 21st, June 21st, or September 21st. Gotcha. And the way we're going. And I, when I did my book, I yeah. thought, oh, I'll get out in March. No, it took until the next March. There was just so much work to be done. And I'm doing it myself. So yeah. um, these things take longer. But 
I, I'm going to use this eclipse day to brainstorm what I need to do, what I can cut out, yeah. what's holding me back, what's distracting me yeah. that I, I don't need to be doing so that I can bring some focus on the message I want to put forward. So publicly, 10th house in my yeah. business. Nice. So, yeah, it's it's, it's, just, it's a lot going on, you know. And as you know, when you work your own lo- website, yeah. There's always something. Google's always saying, hey, what about this? And yeah. hey, what about that? And this plugin's not working. And there are multiple things that need tinkering with all the time. So I'm, I'm going to hopefully going to be using this time to get some thoughts together, tap into that Mercury, tap into the Eris and the Chiron, yeah. say, well, what is going to be good for Alison? Mm-hmm. What can I reasonably do, reg- not what other people think I ought to be doing, oh, you should do this, and oh, you should do that. No, yeah. I want to do it my way, as I always do. Yeah. And it's an Aries, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Aries is the, I did it my way. Uh, yes, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's about wants and needs. It's yeah. sun and moon. So what I want is one thing, but what do I need to get there? So that's what I'm trying to, that's the focus I want to bring to that. Apart from the fact that it's a new moon anyway, it's, yeah. a, it's a super duper new moon because it's an eclipse. Yeah. Uh, we can't see it here, but um, it's definitely happening. And yeah. whichever house it happens for you, it will still be a subtle influence. But if you're paying attention, yeah. you can tap into it. Yeah, you can harness it. Because I always say as well that you can't surf in when the tide's going out. Mm-hmm. So this tide is coming in. Yeah, it's bringing our treasure trove with that North Node, like Pirates of the Caribbean, and we're <laughs> going to walk down the beach, and there's your chest. What do you want to find in there? Yeah. That's what we're trying to manifest. Wow. So yeah, okay. So I thought we'd just have a quick chat about eclipse seasons because we did yeah. mention it earlier. Yeah. So what happens is generally in eclipses only occur when the sun is close to a node, the north or the south node. Okay. And specifically when it gets to within 18 degrees of a node, eclipses will then happen. And that happens twice a year. So this happens twice a year, six months apart. Okay. So when the sun is at one, when it's at, say, the north node, you will have a solar eclipse or two mm-hmm. or three on some occasions. And then you will have a lunar eclipse associated with it either before or after. Yeah. And the same when it then gets to the south node six months down the road, at the second eclipse season, yeah. you will have multiple eclipses. Normally, there's a solar and a lunar, but back in 1935, they had five eclipses on one season. It was intense. Yeah. Yeah. It was just the way the, the, that, it, that it fell. So wow. each year is different. But um, this year, there's just two and then two. There's only four eclipses, yeah. but two seasons. And that's why we talk about eclipse seasons. Yeah. So this is... Is it always spring and fall? No. No. Because the nodes are slowly moving through the zodiac. Right. So the nodes at the moment are in Aries and Libra. So the eclipses will occur in Aries and Libra or the signs adjacent. Yeah. They cannot occur at uh, Cancer or Capricorn right. whilst the nodes are not there. Yeah. Interesting. So you get these eclipse seasons and this is the one. But generally the solar eclipse is more intense because yeah. it's less frequent. Yeah. And it really... It will put a shadow over the face of the earth, but not always through a major city as this right. one is. It's yeah. going across the U.S. and millions of people are going to see it. Yeah. Often they just go over the Arctic or over the ocean and you just don't see it. Yeah. Whereas when you get a lunar eclipse, anyone who can see the moon that night can see it move into the shadow. So yeah. that is. But they might just think a cloud's going over it. It's yeah. usually not a big deal. It's not like the sky <clears throat> darkens because it's already yeah. dark. I, I filmed one out the window here one one evening. The moon came up and I knew there was a lunar eclipse. And I set up my time camera. What do you call it? I don't know. Uh, it, it takes a picture every minute or oh, something. Yeah, yeah, nice. And it went clack, 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 clack. And then I went out and I came back and it was still going clack, 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 clack. And Amazing. I managed to track this through the through this window with rain on it. That's so managed, cool. I managed to track a lunar eclipse. So anyone who could see the moon could see that eclipse. So yeah. they're more common. But solar eclipses are more flashy, flashy, inter- interesting. <laughs> yeah. The place goes dark. Yeah. It goes freezing cold. Yeah. The birds stop chirping. Right. And the, and I'm going to quote, I know I've done this before. I'm probably going to, as long as we're doing this podcast, every time we talk about eclipses, I'm going to mention this article. Yeah. Total Eclipse by Annie Dillard. If you have not read it, and if you are interested in reading articles, we will link to it at the bottom in the show notes. It yeah. is one of the best of all time articles I've ever read in my entire life. It was written about a, a total eclipse that she witnessed in person. And just as a human, 
and the, the evolution of humans having witnessed this since the dawn of time and since yes. the dawn of civilization and in the Tigris Euphrates Valley and not knowing what the, what the hell was happening. And then you go and you just kind of like try to forget that this weird thing happened and just eat your breakfast. And, and you it's, think it's the end of the world. The sun has died. Exactly. A dragon is eating it or whatever they said. Yes. And, and as she even says in the article, it doesn't look like a dragon's eating it, but what it does look like is a lid has just slid over the, and it. she says it happened so fast. She was in, I think, the Yakima Valley in Washington State, and this is in 1979 or so. And she says that it was the most terrifying visceral experience that she or anyone in that valley had ever had. She said that it was just like the sun, the, it, the shadow just moved across the sun mm-hmm. and across the valley so quickly that you, you got this immediate and visceral feeling of, of the movement of the celestial bodies and how fast, how unimaginably swift and inhuman these these planetary motions are. Yes, because you would have seen the shadow coming down the mountain And it side. just races down. Yes. And you normally think, oh, the planet, you know, the, the sun just moves kind of slowly, tick, 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 the day yes. goes by slowly. But when you see the shadow of the moon racing towards the sun, you realize, oh, my God, these things are just sweeping around in a crazy like speed. speed. And that's the one time that as a real human using your eyes, you will see it in, yeah. in your life. At a solar eclipse. At a solar eclipse. Yeah. Exactly. And otherwise you'll have to rely on animations or you NASA. know something that NASA does or, or Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, God love yes. him, will help to make us understand it. But this is one of those times where as a person you can actually feel in touch with all of our ancestors yes. and what they must have experienced well, must back have in felt, the day, yeah. just beginning to understand, oh, my God, we're part of something yeah. bigger. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, you do get eclipse traces, eclipse chases, yeah. and they go to where all these solar eclipses are happening because all these hotels on the eclipse path have been booked up for 10 years ahead. Yes. And, <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. And you can get a plane rides, and the plane will take off and fly in the moon's shadow to extend... Yep. Those are as far photos. as it can, and you even can... though they're jet planes, the moon will tear on ahead, but they will extend the yeah. actual the, um, effect of the eclipse for you, and then you can see the shadow of, of the moon on the Earth from the plane. Yeah. So that must be something, but I understand it's very expensive, because, I mean, yeah. but, you know, yeah. if money's no objects, right. I mean, I'd be doing it, right? Right. I mean, when I was looking at it chasing this eclipse, uh, I can I can say, I thought, Hmm, wow, this this one city in Mexico is just uh, right in the eclipse path. Well, I wonder, you know, and I'm looking like three or four months in advance. And of course, the flights, they were just like a few hundred dollars leading up to it. And then the week ahead and the yeah. week, you know, it just like jumped up like tenfold. Yeah, it's huge. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so if you happen to live in an eclipse pass and you're there on the spot. Yes. Get outside. Awesome. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. Soak it up. Yeah. Make a note of your experiences. Yeah. Get your notepad out. We know Chiron's there. We know. And take pictures. And take pictures. There. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's yeah. a once in a lifetime opportunity. And it's unlikely to be a, an eclipse over the US, particularly for, for many uh, years. Absolutely. Yeah. So, true. yeah. Okay. So, we've spoken about the solar eclipse happening on April the 8th, 2024, at 19 Aries. We've gone through um, how about what eclipses are and how it's likely to manifest and the chart for the eclipse. Um, Below this podcast is actually a link through to the blog post regarding the eclipse. And um, if you found value in this episode, please do share it with someone who would be interested. You can email us at starsology at gmail.com and our website is starsology.com. Well, thank you once more, Arwen, for coming to share your insights with us regarding solar eclipses. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. And thank you for listening, everyone. Yes, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, folks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for getting this far through the episode. I just want to take a moment to tell you about the two main options of my astrology services. So the first one is coaching. If you are an aspiring astrologer, and by that I mean someone who's perhaps a hobbyist astrologer or someone who's learning astrology or a student, or you've got a few books and you've been doing it for a while, but perhaps you need a little bit of help to bring it all together then maybe getting some astrological coaching from me would be the answer for you. The astrology coaching I offer is a one-hour session on Zoom, and it's tailored to answer your particular questions. 
For example, if you have issues with natal chart readings, we can go there. Or if you're having problems working with your forecasting, we can go there. Or even basic astrology stuff, or even getting yourself organized for your astrology business. The idea is that astrological coaching will answer your particular questions. It's tailored specifically to you and where you are in your astrological journey. And I'm happy to help you out with some guidance about how you can get going, what to focus on and what to dismiss. So that would be the astrological coaching for people trying to learn astrology. The second astrological service I offer is consultations. So this is for someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about astrology, but they just want to have their chart read or get their chart done. Call it what you will. So once more, this is a one hour consultation over Zoom. I will interpret your chart, tell you about the main features, tell you about where the energy is flowing and all the rest of what is entailed in a thorough natal chart interpretation. I can also add in some forecasting in there too, bearing in mind we only have one hour. So just in summary, I've got coaching for people who want to learn astrology and I've got uh, consultations for those who want to get an astrology reading done. I'm Alison Price from Starsology.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.